Welcome to our webinar. As always, we're going to have a little bit of fun with 3ds Max and also we're going to be talking about, well, the uh, most uh, efficient ways of creating multiple objects. So uh, today's topic is going to be carpets and generally I divide carpets into uh, mostly three categories. So I hope that you're going to agree with me that, uh, well, the, uh, the categorization of your object is actually going to have quite a lot of impact on what we're going to be doing. So first of all, we've got a, um, realistic, plain, regular carpets that are going to be probably the easiest to do. But before we really get into it, um, Everybody uh, say hello in a chat because I want to see how many of you are online and uh, how are you doing? Uh, so hello, John, nice to have you. How are you been? Uh, Seraphim, hello, Kim, hello, Tenebis. Nice to have you guys. So I see that some of my students are here. Some of new people are also uh, joining in. So I'm really glad that we're, we have something going. Uh, so uh, what about carpets? What are we going to be creating? By Anyway, guys, for those of you that just joined in, my name is Mike and I'm a teacher for Viz Academy. Viz Academy is a rendering school that will teach you how to create beautiful photorealistic visualizations. Um, we also have a training course uh, which will allow you to become a professional. And uh, the course offers live webinars three times a week um, at evenings. So you're going to have plenty of time to uh, do your normal ru uh, daily routine uh, if you're a working in person or a student, for example. At the same time, we also um, have uh, our uh, support available, which is amazing. Seasoned professionals agree to work with us and they are available on our chat to have a little bit of a uh, let's say, a conversation with our students whenever uh, they need assistance. So today we're going to be doing a lot because we're going to uh, explore some carpets, some objects that we're going to be doing. And uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you because I'm all over, all over the place today. Um, if you want to uh, sign up to our training, please visit Viz Academy Co. UK, uh, which is our main website. You can also follow our Instagram and um, our YouTube channel. Okay, okay, without any further ado, let's dive into the topic. So today we're going to be building carpets and we're going to try to give them um, one of plenty of options. Uh, so we're basically going to be creating uh, our carpets based on the easiest techniques that are available to beginners and we're going to slowly progress to more complex and harder techniques so everybody can follow along. Um, but at the same time, we're essentially going to categorize our carpets, as I said, because uh, we essentially have three types of carpets. Uh, plain carpets, fuzzy carpets, weird carpets. And uh, we're going to try to do uh, all of them. So, uh, okay, the chat is on. I see that a lot of you guys are joining in. Hello, Mike and Viz Academy team. Uh, it has been a while since the last time I watched the live. I've uh, been uh, waiting for this topic for, I uh, can't afford uh, to miss it. Uh, nice to hear that, John, and I'm really glad that you joined us. Um, Okay, so hello, uh, uh, Artin, Soner, Alberto, hi, how are you? Uh, Barbara, hey, so nice, it's so co cool to have you guys. Uh, Mora, Maris, Kasim, MA Visuals, uh, Varoy, uh, Soha, hey, Soha, how are you? Uh, uh, and Long, uh, everybody's here so let's get started okay uh first thing first as i said we need to kind of understand what we're going to be doing so 
A lot of you guys, when starting your work with carpets, are going to essentially just uh, try to go to your favorite website, and that's going to be either the Great Catalog, 3D Sky, or similar websites. And you're going to be typing in carpet. Okay, so you're looking for a carpet. You want to uh, you want a specific carpet with some kind of um, let's say pattern on it, and you can see that all of those models here are essentially paid models. And uh, what is really going to be important is that you're probably going to be paying $7 for a box. Uh, that box may come with some kind of extra textures. But because the carpets are neatly shown only from top perspective, it is going to be one of those tricks that 3D artists do um, pull off when dealing with paid, um, uh, paid objects like that. So uh, if you see a carpet which is shown at an edge, uh, or at an angle, it means that there's a likely chance that it's actually higher quality because somebody wasn't afraid to actually show it from a different angle. But why is this flat out angle so bad? Because all of those carpets you see here are not exactly carpets created by some artist, uh, creating beautiful textures, trying to uh, just beat the quality of everybody else. No. It's actually going to be super simple and boring because what you're going to notice is that if we're going to just search the image, uh, sorry, search Google with a reverse image search, you're going to notice one really, uh, really bad thing. And that is uh, we actually have this, um, this uh, carpet here on Google uh, from Amazon. And if I go to Amazon, you're going to see that the exact same texture is available here. And it has all of the details that we need it. So all we need to do is uh, figure, a, uh, figure out a way of downloading those textures. Most of the time, Amazon uh, and other websites may be protecting their um, assets like this but if you just zoom in on it open it i guarantee you that the carpet that you're going to be downloading is not going to be better or different quality maybe the contrast is going to be topped up because hmm, i'm an artist but really it is going to come down to just downloading the first texture somebody found and not doing anything to it so let's just use this uh, knowledge to our advantage. So we're going to be just simply downloading this image. Also, I recommend you guys, if you're going to be working with 3D overall, uh, to install some uh, plugins uh, for your uh, Chrome browser, because I've got one which is Save Image as JPEG. A lot of times you're going to be meeting the web uh, or a web B, B, uh, web P uh, <laughs> format, which is really cool because it saves a ton of space on your computer, but it's useless for us in 3D. So um, to save your file as JPEG, you're going to be able to use this plugin uh, to essentially have a little bit of fun with that. So allow me to just download this as my texture and we're going to get started with uh, our uh, nice carpet. So okay, uh, as you can see, uh, thanks to the magic of internet, I have actually found multiple similar options. But there's one thing that you also have to pay special attention to. Because uh, carpets like this, thank you, carpets like this also have a detail around it. And that's just the frame, you can see that it actually shows here and most of the low quality carpets that you're going to be downloading and remember that there are three types and uh, various uh, quality uh, differences with, be between objects that you're going to be downloading off the internet. So how about we just take this for a quick spin in Photoshop to uh, make sure to fix all of the elements that we need uh, for this object. So. Um, Without any further ado, let's make sure to zoom in on our newly acquired texture and see what we really need to do with it. First of all, you can see that the edges are kind of grayed out uh, so uh, or white-ish. So in most of the cases, this is going to be a problem because once we project this on an object, uh, for example, a box, it is not really going to be uh, that uh, good looking. Let's delete everything I had here and we're going to create our 
first shape. So depending on the, uh, the proportions of your texture, you're probably going to uh, type in the right measurements. Because I don't care about that at the moment, uh, we're just going to be presenting all the elements one by one. So let me just clear out the materials and we're going to start fresh. Okay, so first we're going to drag and drop a Corona physical material. Okay, here we go. And now uh, we've got the, uh, that and we're going to go for ma maps, Corona bitmap, and we're going to quickly see why our carpet's texture needs to be quickly photoshopped or adjusted. I know that not all carpets or uh, textures are going to require that. And there's a trick that I'm also going to be showing you in a second uh, before we get into uh, this uh, topic. Uh, so, okay. Um, Hi Mike, great video. I haven't even yet started, but thank you, uh, Nomad. It's really great to uh, hear that you like the idea for the topic. Uh, so I'm really here to teach you something. And as I said, we're going to have some fun. This is a, a more of a conversation. So I'm really open to all of your um, all of your uh, questions. So please feel free to start a conversation. And uh, as always, uh, tell me something about yourself. Where you where you come where you're coming from uh, hello from Ukraine and that that's what I'm talking about where you're coming from do you have any background in 3d and uh, do you use 3ds max because as you can see I do uh, okay so once we are here this is going to be the very simplest way of creating carpets you create a plane you add a texture you've got a carpet this is going to be good if the carpet is going to be mid distance and we're not going to be really focusing on it but you can see that it's flat and the problem with this texture is that it actually has this white area around here potential a solution to that would be to photoshop out those elements and really do a little bit of a crop in there um, my solution to it typically is to make sure that we uh, how come my phone isn't uh, in a silence mode since I did silence it? Uh, so, okay, that was a little bit of an oopsie. So what we can do is go to Photoshop, press J on our keyboard and lower the size of our brush and simply drag from one point to, sorry, J, uh, make this higher. And now we're going to just heal brush the edges. This is going to be essentially just allowing us to get rid of all of the white uh, areas. but this is going to take us time and not all carpets are wor worthy of that. Uh, so let's just assume that this carpet is going to be mid distance object. So for that reason, I'm going to just go ahead, go to material editor, grab this texture, and we're going to have some fun because a lot of people don't even know that this is possible. Um, so here we're going to click on OK, uh, sorry, on for the crop in our Corona bitmap, view image, and we're going to just zoom in on our edges. So slightly lower the position of your object or let's say the uh, texture projection uh, area. Let's uh, make sure to go here. And we're just going to have to figure out a way on how to get to the bottom of our texture. Right now, my screen is thinking that uh, I, I'm using a 4K monitor because uh, in reality, my multiple screens are a little bit bigger. So um, uh, for the sake of the webinars, I change the resolution. So sometimes 3ds Max does this uh, weird thing where I kind of get lost. Okay, so you can see now that I've cropped all of the texture, uh, cutting out the edges of my carpet and you can see that now no white areas uh, reside on my texture so uh, instantly it's already better so what I'm going to do next is simply convert this object into a little poly and we're going to start adding a few details that might be important for our carpet so there are three ways of approaching this. Either you're going to go YOLO and you're just going to select the vertices and add a little bit of chamfer, which is really going to be the fastest way of uh, editing those elements. And you're essentially not going to be caring a lot about the detail. So here we can just add the rounded edges and this is going to be our first step. Very simple, very cool. And I like doing this because this allows me to move on to the next step where I just simply add a shell but uh, some of you might be more of a uh, perfectionist so instead we're going to be able to also add a two 
edge loops around here to protect the borders. Um, and we're going to do the same at the bottom. So border protection is very important uh, in 3D. So you can see that right now we're going to do the same at the, uh, at the bottom. For those of you that are new in uh, 3ds Max, um, the tool that I use to create those lines is uh, Swift Loop. It is available when you click Alt and 1, so it's going to be uh, just a handy tool to use. Uh, you can see that we also have those lines in the middle. Uh, you essentially want to um, either delete them or move them around, but that's also going to be stretching your texture. To avoid this, we can click on the um, uh, edit in um, editing options and that's uh, retain UVs which is in edit geometry so if we preserve UVs now and this is going to be ignored yes if you go too far and destroy the object uh, like that uh, you're essentially going to just keep projecting the way it was before but yeah it's going to do some damage if you do too much so be very cautious now uh, let's make sure to um, add the shell back or if you're um, a little bit um, into just manual work we're just going to extrude this as I did right now. Okay, so this allows us to simply uh, continue with our next step, and that's going to be turbo smoothing. Uh, so uh, with turbo smooth, you can see that now our carpet has a little bit of an edge. The texture neatly projects from the edge to the bottom. Perfection, right? So this is the simple second step of our carpets. You want to give it a little bit of thickness. Something around two centimeters is going to be more than enough. And in most of the cases, it is going to be something that you will just enjoy because as you see, this is simple. If I'm going to now add some kind of teapot on top of this object, uh, it is still going to look nice. Um, so we can start rendering. Perfection. It's a carpet. Carpets are flat. No further questions. And thanks to the fact that we've added the turbo smooth, it actually adds a little bit of that softness around the edges. So that's super cool. Uh, so remember, we don't want to have any kind of bottom here because it's redundant for us. And most of the time, we're not going to be looking under the carpet unless you're really doing something weird. Uh, so uh, would you be covering hair and fur in Corona uh, for... Uh, for like runs, yes, that's uh, hi, I, I, <laughs> uh, yes, we will be uh, covering it. It's going to be the second method I'm going to be covering today. Uh, I personally hate hair and fur uh, because it has one flaw that I just cannot go over, and um, unfortunately, the uh, best software out there that would be um, something that would allow us to. Uh, skip the hair and fur or Natrix is a paid software and paid software although very useful um, it's just not it it's just not good for beginners because you're not going to be paying uh, 200 to 300 pounds per uh, software if you just want to create a fuzzy rug that's going to be stupid uh, so uh, what's uh, what uh, that's uh, what I'm thinking why aren't we Cropping in, in Max. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Going through trouble with 3ds Max just crashes and also uh, undoes, uh, doesn't work any solutions. Um, so if your undo doesn't work and uh, that's going to be the problem, Akshia, I believe that you might want to check out a software called Prune Scene. Uh, in newest 3D, uh, in newest Corona, we also have a scene cleaner. So uh, chances are that you're actually experiencing a little bit of a problem. I'm going to uh, go on a whim and uh, just guess that you're using an older version, 3ds Max 21, 22, maybe 2020. So if you are using an older version, older versions were, let's say, open to some kind of, var var uh, well, attacks. So because those viruses are available, able to get into your system, especially through 3ds Max, your software may be malfunctioning. So please make sure to check if Prune Scene is going to help you if you're using an older version. If you're using a newer version, please update to the newest version available uh, with all the, mm, all the 
how's it called service packs uh, if there's any available in your region so that's going to help you also double check in your uh, preferences because chances are that you just don't have any uh, undo scene option available to you uh, because um, well chances are that you're just doing something weird also uh, last but not least sometimes when you will be uh, opening your scripting you may actually have the object listener open and macro recorder if your macro recorder is on sometimes it glitches out and doesn't allow you to go uh, control z because it's currently recording everything you do so it doesn't allow you to step back because well the script is going to be ruined uh, so uh, <laughs> thank you uh yeah i know i know i uh, just wanted to have some fun uh we're here to have fun after all so okay uh we've got the most uh, simplest elements of our carpet done now let's add a bit of detail because i know details right uh, so how about we convert this object to a little poly as is with the turbo smooth it's still going to be a uh, very um, small object because it's only 250 60 uh, polygons so we can go crazy with it if we need to or want to so i want to let's just continue uh, here i'm going to double click on one of the edges so first let's zoom in on one of the edges uh, here i'm going to uh, create shape from selection and uh, that's going to be an essential move for our, all of our carpet edges so linear is going to be our go-to uh, click now uh, what i want you to remember is that this is not going to be necessary for 95 percent of carpets but we're here to learn so let's just explore some options rendering options let's turn those on and we're going to just quickly create that small but significant detail for our carpet now it has the edge that goes around it it's a little bit stiff so we're probably going to give it the same treatment as we did with uh, the previous object or we can just go ahead and go for radial and make it smaller important fact is that your carpet kind of needs to make sense so make sure that the edge that you've created is going to be on the ground and that the top of your carpet is going to follow because well carpets right uh, it also doesn't have to be the same size because that's going to mimic the fuzziness to some extent so now we're just going to uh, render this for most of the situations this is enough but you're better than that and we're going to be doing more uh, so uh, let's just go ahead and uh, create something extra now select the object that you've created and now kids you're going to learn something super cool uh, what we need is some kind of tread or some kind of rope texture i'm going to be uh, looking for the most basic texture i can find and you're going to be helping me with that uh, because we're going to be googling uh, so carpet edge we're doing something like this or like that you know just a little bit of detail probably not this because that's going to be uh, the wrong one but definitely something that looks more like fabric ish object right so something like that is our go-to uh, desired element now uh, to do that we're going to create a new material for our main carpet and we're just going to copy it because we don't want to uh, be too smart as sm too much of a smarty pants uh, just copying one object all the time load and uh, well i kind of need to um, copy the directory that we're in right now so let's go and we're going to google that texture so rope texture okay images and we want to find something that's going to be good enough but we don't want to really spend too much time on thinking whether it's good or not uh, so uh, find the, the best or first pattern that appeals to be okay-ish okay-ish to me save image as and we're going to just save it as is make sure that it's not web something and save the image done now the funny part begins because you're going as i said we're going to be teaching today uh, so uh, first let's make sure that the texture is visible in the viewport and we're going to also zoom in slightly so let's zoom in nothing is visible why is that that's due to the fact that at the moment we do not have generated any mapping coordinates once we do add those we're going to see that the texture is slightly stretched 
So on top of our objects, we're going to be adding UVW X form modifier. And we're going to change the tiling on one of the tiles. And I'm just going to go crazy on the value. Oh, I forgot to actually add the material. Okay. So here, as I said, go crazy on the V value in my case. And you can see that now we've got nicely repeating texture on our edge. So instantly it's going to uh, appear a little bit patterned, but uh, carpets are kind of patterned. So it's going to look kind of nice. We still could use some kind of color correction to add a detail or just adjust the elements. And remember that uh, pro what's going to be probably very important for the carpet's uh, quality is the resolution of your main texture, because if it's going to be trash, it's not going to work. Um, but Let's just uh, keep this simple. Now we've got our Corona bitmap and I want this to kind of break the pattern at least to some extent. So we're going to be adding one extra node in here and that node is going to be Corona, Corona, um, uh, Corona <laughs> mapping random randomizer. They changed the name uh, because uh, previously it was a UVW randomization and sometimes when I'm online I just forget about that name. So since we added a lot of tiling we're going to randomize minus one and minus one on U and V values which are X and Y uh, but uh, textures are uh, using different coordinates randomize each tile and this way our texture is going to be neatly randomized in a way that we're going to be breaking the pattern but if we zoom in we're still going to see the rope like behavior also i noticed that my rope is rotated 90 degrees so how about we actually go to our corona bitmap oh actually no we're not doing it from the, that level we're going to rotate our uh, texture from the level of parameters and now we're going to probably have to zoom in to see anything because there's a little bit of density around here so uh yeah that could have been a mistake so you know what i'm going to probably have to add a bit of uh, different values around here to get it done okay now it looks more like a rope okay with mid to semi distance uh, to large distance this is going to look fantastic and the fact that we uh, randomized it it's going to be uh, it's going to be very powerful because right now the carpet's uh, edge is just looking good so uh, that's powerful I guess uh, let's add a little bit of thickness now it's remapped and we add the UVW mapping and we have our perfect um, edges yes I still could add the corona color correction so let's just do that so it's going to be a little bit gray-ish so change material type on the line node connected to um, be able to just simply go for that okay uh, mr corona could you please show me the maps that i'm trying to add nope and uh, 3ds max decided that uh, right now it's going to be a brat 3ds max now uh, maps let's go to corona corona color correct and we've got our map and we added in we could also add the same map as our bump if you're really into that detail but i'm just going to go for the most basic setup and just try to get the similar brightness in my texture as the main color of the carpet and voila we got everything we needed so this is essentially method number one um, additional steps that you can take to make this more interesting is adding some kind of fabric textures to your uh, main uh, object but uh, really instead of using a fabric I refer mostly to cellular because cellular allows you to get all those dots that kind of resemble uh, what you see on a carpet so a lot of small dots uh, pretty much a noise texture but with dots so I'm going to just add it in as either my base bump or displacement for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to go for displacement but you might as well just go for a simple uh, as, as simple uh, solution as bump because it's still it requires a little bit uh, of decision making well, what would you prefer okay again did i make a mistake and re-added the texture no everything is okay so why is the cellular working with the second object as well or is it just Okay, that's the, that's the first. Now uh, let's continue because at the moment I'm going to lower the size of the cell um, for the cellular. So this time, what's going on? Okay, 0 0.2. Uh, 
and we're going to lower the overall size which is going to be uh, essentially our transition to method number two where you get the low carpets that don't require a lot of detail with just simply adding the simplest displacement from cellular. Uh, remember that cellular is uh, calculated for each um, opening of your um, of your interactive. So right now you can see that we've got a lot of detail, but right after the area that was displayed, it's just flat. So if you're going to be checking out different angles, you're going to have to restart your rendering or, or at least the interactive render to see everything again and again and again. Okay, so we're go going to go for minus uh, 0 0.1 up to two millimeters. And now this is going to look really nice because we're going to introduce a little bit of fuzziness to our carpet and it's essentially going to have that extra detail. All of that because it's just two millimeters could be essentially um, um, substituted with simple bump, but bump isn't going to create the same shadow because bump is faking shadows. So essentially, you're not going to get the same quality this way. Uh, although it's going to let, uh, use less RAM, you can combine the two, and it's going to be even more powerful. So now all we need to do is adjust any kind of um, parts of our carpets material that you uh, deem uh, to be necessary. So for example, we can add the sh uh, sheen layer 0 0.5 roughness stays the same. So now we're going to have a little bit of that um, sheen like behavior Behavior because we're going to see a little bit of that extra white-ish uh, tone on it. And thanks to the fact that, again, this is carpet, cellular is going to be absolutely perfect for this assignment. We could also create multiple uh, different masks for all of the carpet's details, but remember, this is a carpet in your interior, um, your furniture is going to be on it, and so probably nobody's going to be no looking whether this part has all of the um, lines in a correct manner. I mean, it's just impossible for us anybody to care about that. Okay, this pretty much brings us to the uh, method number one, which was uh, just fake it, add a texture, add uh, some bump, and that's it. But now, I still think that this, um, this model could use a little bit of extra love and we're going to add it in by uh, attaching those two together so now we're going to be able to add another level of turbo smooth and on top of that we're going to add another level of turbo smooth and on top of that we can also add another level of turbo smooth because those three levels of turbo smooth will also allow us to do one funny thing and that is we're going to add noise map add a five centimeters by five centimeters and lower the sky scale a little bit this is going to make your carpet more lifelike uh, so if you're going to uh, position it on your ground it's just not going to be as uh, perfect uh, just add a subtle uh, distance or scale in here because that looks a little bit better because it has a bit of uh, imperfection in it really good uh, to have in your interior and uh, that's going to be super cool but now uh, let's just add another modifier which is going to be displace uh, so displacement is actually going to be super cool you can use regular noise map or you can download something like wrinkle map or texture um, uh, or let's say a wrinkle brush texture wrinkle fabric texture image and we're going to be looking for mm, okay how about brush uh, we're going to be looking for any kind of texture that is black and white and has uh, this kind of lines in it you can create those in photoshop in seconds uh, because it doesn't uh, take a uh, genius to create some swivels in your uh, photoshop but essentially what we're going to be creating is that I have already pre, pre um, prepared uh, some of the textures, but long story short, is like this. You go for new, uh, create the right dimension object, 1024, 1024. It's a very small texture. Uh, you typically want to go for 4K textures, but comma, who cares? Let's just go uh, Control I, add a new layer, and we're going to create some kind of uh, white ish. Uh, lines so something like this and let's just continue brush 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 okay like this 
we're going to just uh, call those wrinkles in a second. Now, once we have those uh, created, we're going to go to filter, liquefy, and we're going to have some fun. We're just going to just try to move those around uh, to essentially just make them a bit more uh, jazzed up. And we don't need to really pay attention to a lot of detail because those are wrinkles on some kind of fabric. So if we're going to go crazy and this is going to be like this, it's still wrinkly enough. Control J to copy that layer, filter, and now we're going to just blur this out. So one layer below is going to be pretty much our transition. So this is going to be neatly um, adjustable. And now we can just merge those to visible. And uh, with all of those swivels, you probably want to keep in mind that if you're going to go for nice subtle wrinkles, it's going to look better. But I wanted to be uh, I wanted this to be a bit exaggerated. So let's uh, control shift S to save our file. You can see that I've already had a little bit of fun. Some of them are downloaded, some of them I've created on my own. Uh, so let's go for number 15. Because I've noticed that buying this kind of maps isn't going to cut it because those are uh, typically just so easy to make so you can make them on your own and call your work more custom because nobody else is going to have the same thing as you do. So I kind of, uh, I would actually call it precious. So now let's select our map, perfecto, and let's add it in into our displace modifier, but in a slot of map, add it in, add instance. And the funny part is that now I'm going to just go for strength, and we've got our wrinkles on the carpet. Very simple, very easy. Um, with one extra turbo smooth, you can see that now our carpet has more lifelike appearance. Um, also, we can rotate our displacement to uh, pretty much position this wherever we want. Uh, one very important thing to remember is that you kind of want to make sure that your texture is going to be ending with black areas because this way it's going to be easier to end it in the middle of your object and it's not going to have a sharp cutout. As you can see here, it actually just neatly positions and it looks like some worms are uh, below. Hello, hello Renault, nice to have you. How are you? Hello, how to make wood panel more easily? Uh, like how to make the space between wood and wall? Uh, so if you want to make uh, some kind of wooden panels, I would definitely probably, uh, definitely probably recommend uh, looking into just simple um, uh, floor generator because it's actually really good. Okay, now with our mapping intact, but still a few wrinkles introduced, this is definitely more of a carpet. But if you're not into this scale, we can just scale it up and it's still going to look nice, just like we would be uh, working on working on your exterior and how's it going Renault? Uh, Renault is one of my uh, students and he's making super cool um, uh, super cool uh, in exterior right now so uh, I could actually uh, look into your profile if uh, if I'm going to be able to find it real quick because you know online things are always working in a little bit uh, myster mischievous ways so uh, I hope that you oh actually you have a uh, your name and surname on YouTube. So I hope that you're not going to uh, be bothered with that. And uh, I'm showing your current uh, progress with the exterior. So let's, uh, let's go here. And let's Okay, now, uh, this is uh, the in interior exterior that Renault is currently working on. So he started from scratch, he uh, is using some references, but essentially, Everything you see here, he modeled from scratch. And uh, right now he's one of our students, so I'm really proud of you. Um, and also we've got his first render with us and it's actually not in the final fold, uh, form yet. So uh, because it's not in the final folder, so I'm not going to be say, uh, calling it final, final, final yet, but it's uh, pretty good. Uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And you can see how awesome it is, just like our students are. Uh, so this is, um, well, you could use the same techniques here, you can see that we got a few wrinkles here and there, which are very powerful to uh, establish a little bit more realism. So thank you for joining in. And I'm so glad that, uh, to see you. Uh, so uh, trying to reset the 3ds max default folder. Yes, resetting Anu might actually help. Uh, I'm not doing anything weird with 3ds max. Yep. Uh, hello. How to make okay going through? Um, 
Um, hello from Turkmenistan. I love your work. Uh, thank you, uh, Sergey. It's really, really nice to uh, hear that. I'm going to check out your channel, channel as well because I see that your games channel. So why not check if uh, you play some nice titles? Uh, so okay. Now this is still the first method, still the first one, but we're essentially going to be transitioning to the second version in a second because um, our base for the carpet is going to be uh, the same for all three methods because you essentially can uh, simulate all of that I've created, but at the same time, it's not going to be necessary. But the second method, and somebody uh, asked about it in our audience already, are we going to be using hair and fur for our, um, hello, uh, Hello, Renu. Uh, nice to have you. Ah, uh, no, no, no taxis, vaxis. Uh, you already said hello. Uh, so uh, nice to have you. Now, uh, let's go for a hair and fur modifier. I'm going to be absolutely frank with you. I hate it. Um, not because it's wrong. Uh, memory limits. Okay, so we're going to have to lower the amount of turbo smooth we are adding because the object is going to actually hate us and might actually crash our 3ds max as it's going to use a bit more memory. Uh, fortunately, we're not experiencing any memory spike, but you can see that it actually ate one gigabyte of our RAM. So it's still being calculated as we go. Uh, hello, Danny. Nice to have you. How, how are you doing? So, um, okay. I guess that was a bad idea because of the amount of turbo smooth, um, amount of the turbo smooth we used, plus there's an object. Yeah. Let's wait for it to uh, take its toll on us. Meanwhile, I'm going to open up the second instance of 3ds Max. I just went a little bit overboard with my values, uh, so let's uh, give it a second. Probably is going to, uh, once I open the second 3ds Max, you're going to notice, hey, it's back. And yes, it will be. But uh, meanwhile, I'm already going to be uh, far gone and really hating 3ds Max for doing that. Oh. Did you see that? And now, uh, hello, uh, I'm Syed from Qatar. Uh, I'm working as 3D visualizer. Uh, it's my first time viewing your tutorials. Really uh, honored to have you, glad that you found us, and I hope that you're going to enjoy our videos. So essentially, we are Viz Academy, a rendering school that will teach you how to create beautiful photorealistic visualizations. Uh, you can check out our YouTube content, and uh, which is absolutely free. We provide a lot of useful textures, materials, and whatnot. But if you want to really dive into it and have our full attention, make sure to check out our main website. It's Viz Academy Co. UK. And there you're going to be able to also sign up to our training, which is the full package. Uh, so. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, try to open the auto backup uh, location because uh, I'm afraid that at this moment 3ds Max is playing tricks on me. So, okay, I guess we're just going to try to open up the last one and hope that it's not going to be crashing. <laughs> uh, greetings from Guatemala City, Central America. Oh, nice, nice. Really nice to have you. Uh, I mean, I'm really glad to have all of you, but uh, hearing about, well, countries that I'm probably uh, ev not ever going to be able to visit, uh, it's so cool to hear that uh, one person can be from Turkmenistan, somebody from Qatar, Ukraine, uh, then there's uh, Central America. That's super cool to hear that. I'm really grateful, guys, that you spend that uh, few minutes of your of your day to listen to what I have to say. Um, sir, uh, this live broadcast will be recorded on channel, right? Yes, just as all of our live webinars, uh, we're going to be uh, leaving this online if it's going to be, um, if it's not going to uh, be uh, some kind of flawed, because sometimes I make mistakes and I kind of hate this. And no, I never make any mistakes. Okay, so let's lower the turbo smooth uh, density because that, that really killed our hair and fur modifier. Reason number one why I hate it. Uh, so, okay, the displacement is going to stay. I could just retopologize this slightly um, to make it uh, more displacement friendly, uh, but I'm just going to ignore this. Um, hello, Jidas from India. Nice to have you. Uh, Jayesh from India. Sorry, I'm really bad with uh, names, so uh, 
I'm going to learn how to pronounce your names, guys, at some point. Um, but now I hope that you're going to have a little bit of patience for me. So convert this object to a double poly. We no longer want to have this um, edge as our as, as the same part as our main element. What is going to be important whenever you will be working with your hair and fur is that hair and fur is going to be added everywhere. So uh, essentially you want to uh, take into consideration whether you want some kind of uh, hair growing on the edges of your object. For some reason it's really weird uh, with my camera. So we're going to go to Ordo. Uh, so here I'm going to make sure to delete a few loops from the bottom because I've already added the, this edge. But if you're not going to be adding an edge as I did, you don't need to do it. So I'm going to delete just two. And now we're going to be continuing by adding the hair and fur modifier as we uh, tried the last time. Okay, so uh, number reason number one why I hate hair and fur uh, is that hair and fur is um, somewhat good, but at the same time, it has a huge flaw that absolutely eliminates it as a soft uh, as a modifier that I like using. Because if I'm going to take this hair and fur and I have perfect, most perfect settings ever, you have never seen as beautiful hair strands as hair and fur uh, cr uh, could uh, create because scatters are really amazing, but hair and fur is designed to do the hair, right? So now I copy my perfect settings to the smaller object and it's smaller. Okay, I copy it to a bigger object and it, it remember, I'm copying exactly the same modifier and it's again big. It's just in, uh, not going to be consistent and I've actually contacted Autodesk to help me understand how a world scale modifier works and uh, how can I kind of keep this scale consistent, right? Um, the answer was, I don't know, uh, and that's it. That, that was actual answer from 3ds Max, um, I mean from Autodesk. Um, probably they didn't do the funny sound, but yeah. Um, but um, that's beside the point because uh, if we try to render this, you're going to quickly notice that even as a default setting, it actually looks good. But we're going to make it look better. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's go to um, our tools. And uh, first, let's check if there's any problems here. Nope, no problems. Noticed, and we're going to go, uh, are you using Stable Diffusion or any other AI tool? Uh, and uh, what do you think about future of 3D industry? Uh, thank you, Mohammed, for that question. So as with all of software, when V-Ray was coming out, uh, everybody said our work is finished because now somebody can create uh, visual not in two months but two weeks. Our industry is over. Everybody is going to be absolutely lost. When uh, V-Ray got better, everybody was, okay, it's working better. Now you can create visuals in a day time. Uh, so, okay. Then Corona came out and uh, everybody was, oh no, it's now so automated that our work is finished. AI is going to be just another tool in your repository. It's going to allow you to work on your design and it's going to be just better in some um, in some fields because, for example, Stable Diffusion is good for exteriors right now because if you have some plants and you Stable Diffusion that, it's going to kind of make it more photographic. But is it going to take your job? No, because uh, that's go going to require still a lot of uh, input from an artist. You still have to uh, be able to discriminate with, between something that looks good and looks bad. You're going to have to follow the instructions, which at the moment AI isn't really good at that much. Uh, it hallucinates too much. So. As I said um, approximately a year ago, uh, AI is a toy, not a tool yet, but it's slowly becoming a tool that we're, go we're going to be incorporating into our workflow over time, whether we like it or not. Uh, so um, I am um, of uh, the opinion that if something can speed up my work and make it better, I will take it. Um, and sometimes some artists will say, yeah, but you no longer have control over what you're going to show. Well, when you're using pre-made assets, you're not much of a creative artist anyway. Uh, so at that point, yes, you're changing the materials, but so can AI. 
So what's the difference in that? I see no difference. And why is your job 100% secure? Because uh, first of all, before you, you know that your boss can do probably your job, right? Why isn't that person doing it? Because it's a one person and there's plenty of projects. There's people to talk to and uh, so on and so forth. And lastly, if you want to um, be able to create a project or finish a project, you have to know exactly what you want. And I'm yet to see a client that knows what they want. If they knew what they want exactly, they wouldn't be asking us artists to help them, to guide them, to give them a little bit of an advice. But at the same time, you have to be wary that AI is not going to be just a fluke. It's going to be probably part of our daily routine uh, from uh, from just a simple uh, painting to uh, photoshopping to all of those uh, elements. You're probably going to have some elements of AI, but what it really is, it's automation of some of your work. So if anything, you're going to be more efficient. Uh, so yeah, let's continue. And now uh, with Heron 4, you've got plenty of options, but uh, most importantly, uh, you've got general parameters and we're going to be using those for a second. So first we're going to go for hair segments, which is essentially how many bend, uh, bends uh, can it make. So if we add more, it's going to be bending in a more natural manner and it's no longer going to be as, as stiff. So that's it. Hair passes, it's just uh, how many uh, let's say uh, strands, we can break one uh, hair uh, strand too, and that's really it. Displacement is a flyaway parameter. It can be controlled with a nice black and white map, which uh, is kind of okay. Um, and uh, what we're really going to be using is the scale, because we want to go for a carpet, which is a regular size, so something around one meter and a half in diameter, um, we're going to be going for scale around eight. Uh, so probably that's going to be the uh, hair length we're going to be interested in. But you might as well be tempted to go higher. But right now, we're not really dealing with hair. Um, we're kind of dealing with some kind of a small, um, a small, yeah, whatever that is. Still looking good, but not what we need. So we're going to just change the randomization scale to a little bit smaller, 25%. And then we're going to go to the root thickness and change it to something around five and uh, root tip, depending on whether you're creating fur or fuzzy. Uh, we're going to be deciding on that. I'm going to for fuzzy. So we're going to go for the same root and tip thickness. So this way, we're going to get a little bit chunkier uh, objects, as you can see here. But at the same time, it looks quite nice. What's going to be a huge letdown is whenever you will be using your hair and fur, you're essentially not going to be able to add any texture at all. I mean, you can, and I'm going to explore this with you in a second, but it's not going to be something that you're going to be comfortable with because yes, it is going to be complicated. And the biggest minus part of a hair and fur modifier is that it actually eats a lot of your RAM. It's uh, very demanding and it takes a lot of time to recalculate if you're adding something extra or taking something away. Okay, a root thickness, let's make this thinner. Okay, two seems better. So now we're going to uh, top up uh, the amount of hair strands we're using. I think 50,000 is going to be a good starting point for our fuzzy carpet. Um, the essence or the idea here is to make sure to add as uh, as many hair strands as to cover what's behind our hair. So pretty much we're going to be going four times what we have here or even more. But at, the, at this point, we want to just make sure that whatever we have in the back is not going to be a problem. Because if we're going to be zooming in, you're going to see a huge open gaps, which aren't going to look good. So for that reason, we're going to actually have to also adjust our main material because carpets, as you know, are going to have some kind of uh, back. And so uh, the main material, uh, first of all, needs to have no displacement, no bump, because we no longer need it. And we're going to go for the main material and change this to just regular fabric or something with, well, rope-like uh, lines. 
So I'm just going to go to uh, this Academy fabric textures that uh, we provide to our students and I'm just going to select fabric 2. It's a generic fabric texture so this is not going to be something that you cannot find on your own so I'm just going to leave it as is. Hello from Pakistan and hello to Pakistan. So now we can see that there's a little bit of something forming there and we can adjust the tiling on our texture so it's going to be more lifelike and now we're going to see that the texture actually looks nice but we can barely see it because it's behind a huge hairline and that's exactly what we needed but the huge hairline isn't um, that good so uh, we're still going to go for lower root thickness okay and now we're going to go for higher value of hair count 500,000 that's a lot uh, so uh, go easy on the value start with something smaller 200,000 let's see how it looks like and how it behaves uh, because that's going to be our first step uh, before you um, add any kind of changes here uh, we're going to be going for that hi why V-Ray plugin is, uh, especially in max look better but in the other software look bad rendering for example gamma reflection ray trace etc frank uh, because uh, each software has a different core and um, the way V-Ray handles that core is going to be the difference between uh, the uh, that you see in the quality. Uh, although the same values in V-Ray for SketchUp and V-Ray for 3ds Max are going to be resembling very uh, closely, the problem is that SketchUp often doesn't allow you to cr create as high fidelity materials, textures, um, and also models. Because uh, in order to have a really good looking object, you still have to have a nice looking uh, model. So, Ahmed, you're not late. You're right in time, probably, but we're already on method number two. Uh, so, start interactive. You can see that now, by default, it's going to have quite nice looks to it. Uh, so, um, we have to always take into account that our hair is going to be very, very demanding for our computer. And you can see that slowly, uh, more RAM usage is creeping in each time I add more hair to my object. But it's time to actually make it more interesting. So before we really continue, I'm going to lower that um, by one zero, and we're going to be changing some values around here. So, okay, here the general parameters are done. Uh, I'm going to sh tell, share a story with one of my students. So she was working on uh, carpet like this and uh, she was like uh, yeah I want to make this a little bit more um, more um, uh, more crazier more lifelike uh, you know all of that uh, I want this to look a bit more um, a little bit more realistic so um, I and I quote said your carpet probably needs a little bit more kink thinking about this parameter she didn't like it <laughs> Yeah, she didn't like me uh, saying that because uh, she really thought that I was being a little bit naughty. And uh, yeah, it almost got me in trouble. But um, to be honest, I believe that all of your carpets need a little bit of kink, uh, guys, especially in 3ds Max. Uh, so yeah, uh, watch uh, what, uh, yeah, that was just funny. Uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, root the uh, let's kink the root, and we're going to be adding a something around five. So it's going to be all fuzzy and crazy as a carpet, a fuzzy carpet should be. Uh, and we're going to be uh, adding a little bit of that. So here you can see that now we've got all of that fuzziness. It looks very nice. But now, okay, Mike, you said that we're going to be able to add at least a little bit of uh, colors and materials to it. Well, yeah, that's exactly what I said. Uh, whenever you will be working with very fuzzy carpets, my su uh, suggestion for you guys is uh, go to performance and always turn off your um, uh, denoising because it's annoying to see everything blurred out before you see any hair strands everything is going to be just a gigantic blob at first it's going to be very noisy but you can see why it is important because this would be all lost okay so now uh, with all the fuzziness and all the parameters we're going to be able to apply a few more uh, settings so first Unfortunately, we're going to uh, go all in and we're uh, increasing the amount of hair we're using. So uh, not only 
uh, 10 times, about 20 times more hair strands uh, than before. And we're going to see how this performs. First of all, obviously, it's going to be eating a, a lot of RAM, uh, but I'm going to uh, show you a nice method that might actually help you just a teeny bit when working with Corona and hair and fur, which I always will be saying I hate because of the inconsistency. Um, okay. Um, yeah, it's RAM usage slowly creeps in. Look at, at that uh, spike. So three gigabytes might be a lot. Uh, in for my system, it's uh, manageable, but uh, for a regular laptop, that can be quite a challenge. Uh, so it is good to understand that it might be a problem in some instances. Okay, so again, we're waiting for it, and remember that hand for can you work faster if we're going to add a special modifier called Corona hair modifier? It's not exactly the same thing as hair and fur because it's not. It's just a funny plugin that changes all the objects in hair and fur uh, modifier into simple planes and that speeds up the process of rendering. But at the same time, you can also see that the quality of the hair work reading is actually quite good. So uh, you lose some, you win some. And uh, for me, I still hate this uh, modifier because of the uh, con uh, inconsistency, but I'm going to give it a pass because it's actually uh, doing its job correctly. So um, at least that's a plus. So let's lower the amount here to four, higher pass is one because I want this to be more primitive. And now we're going to go for Corona, Corona hair modifier, and we're adding it in. So render as plain, that's all it does. When enabled hair and uh, are rendered as planes, facing the camera, blah, 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 renders faster. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and render this out. Just a sip of coffee. And again, this is one of the main reasons why I always tell my students that we add hair and fur as the very last element in your scene, because even if you have a beefy computer, it is going to always uh, take a, a strand or a toll on your uh, computer's performance. Um, conserve a memory can help. I don't think it's going to be uh, really that helpful, but at least we've got nice fuzzy carpet, as I promised, uh, so it looks nice. The last thing that I'm going to be doing with this uh, modifier is to show you how to add the proper material. And unfortunately, there's no apparent way of adding textures to your um, to your um, hair and fur object. Because the problem is that now if I'm going to go to that styling uh, to material, we've got to custom shader, which is going, going to be Corona shader or any other shader that you want to prepare, but it's just going to be ignoring any textures that you're adding. So it's not a texture. But you've got material parameters. We've got tip and root thickness. So uh, we essentially could change the colors here to make the hair exactly as we need it. So a darker, brighter, whatever, right? Uh, so root color, let's just make it grayish. So the top is going to be whitish. So uh, we're definitely going to see the difference. But then I'm going to show you why textures won't work. Because textures added into those slots aren't really going to be calculated as a normal texture would be. Uh, so just projecting the texture and we're done. No, it's going to be used as a black and white Mul um, multiply map. So it's going to multiply via this color that you've set up here. So unless uh, it's going to be possible to introduce a little bit of color, uh, which I don't know about, this is going to be a redundant way of adding textures. But at least again, it looks good. And um, let's go ahead and add a little bit of that. So uh, let's take some kind of really easily distinguishable texture and add it to our slot. So first, let's find a texture that actually allows us to. So textures, um, going back to our main texture that we found at the very beginning, and we're going to set the tiling to one by one. And as I said, um, you know what, it's actually grayed out texture. So it's going to do its job really nice. So, okay, let's find a different carpet. I think this one is going to be uh, good because it's going to show us exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, instance, blue carpet it is, and instance, 
Okay, uh, so from I'm going to change this blue to red-ish, so uh, it's easier to understand what the problem is. Okay, and start interactive. You can also see that there's a hue variation and some um, hue, um, value variation. So those two values are going to be adding a bit of randomization to your hair in general. So it is going to be uh, you will you actually get a lot of value out of that but still not being able to control the hair and rendering it for as long as it does uh, in this case i absolutely do not recommend using hair and fur in your scenes unless you need a very fuzzy carpet that's going to be something that you absolutely need to have in your scene so uh, once it's uh, there we're going to move on to the next method as I mentioned, uh, right now, the texture that I've added is only as um, acting as a um, multiplier map. So the darker areas from this texture are going to be visible. So if we rotate, you're going to notice that this is how the texture is projected, but it actually uses the colors that I've set up in here, right? So we're essentially gi giving up uh, this map as a black and white map to overlay on the color. So we're not going to have any kind of way of creating some kind of uh, carpet with uh, a lot of detail. You're not going to be able to do that unless you're going to be using layers of your uh, modifiers with a specific maps that will be used as masking maps. So you would essentially have to add another map in your distribution. So in in, uh, in general parameters, we'd have to add to density a black and white map that would be, uh, let's say, black and white for one hair object and white and black for the next one to um, split the colors into some kind of divisions. But then again, you're going to have to create 20 layers for uh, to get uh, some kind of consistent uh, three color, five color object. And that's going to be really a big problem. Uh, do you think Corona decals uh, would work above the carpet? I believe that it would, uh, but I honestly haven't tested it. Um, so let's test it. Uh, so this is the method that will allow you to create the hair in the position you want. That's okay. But as I said, if you want to have the difference between hair color number one and two, you're going to have to resort to the method that I've described. So we're going to have to copy our modifier and add the reverse scaled uh, map in this one and change the colors. It's possible, doable, but it's uh, a lot of hassle and you're going to have to create a good opacity maps for those. In many cases, it's actually what you do anyway if you're going to uh, create some, uh, use different methods, but uh, we're going to be able to uh, probably wi live without it. Okay, so I'm going to lower the amount of hair strands we're dealing with and let's uh, test out some kind of decal because uh, that's a question that I was also asked by one of my students today So uh, and I haven't had the time uh, to test it so uh, let's just check out uh, if it works. So Corona, okay, thank you, Chaos. This looks very promising. Um, da -da 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 -da. Got it. So let's see if Corona decal is going to work. Uh, better say before you try the decal. <laughs> oh yeah, you're actually super, super right on that. Um, um, thank uh, you, Dennis. Okay, so we're going to see uh, where whether it works or not. Uh, so uh, fingers crossed, <clears throat> it should work. I mean, there's no reason not to, but it's actually, it might actually ignore it. Uh, let's see. Oh, it ignores it. Yeah, so it only works with the geometry below, probably. Uh, yeah, it projects, it projects on some of the hair. What's going on here? Okay, so it does project, but whether it is on hair strands or not. Oh, it's too low. Let's go higher. Look at that. It actually works. It actually works. Okay, so we've got a solution. Um, we just found um, where we just found it. Um, so 
What is that? That's uh, that's uh, the a hair and fur modifier actually working with the uh, nice and deep uh, decal that we've added so uh, yeah it works the problem is that it cuts perfectly into the hair so it's going to just um, paint the hair strands um, in the middle let's say but I wouldn't say it's bad it's usable. it's somehow um, also appealing and it's uh, very um, responsive in this way so it actually isn't that, that bad of an idea. If you're not going to be viewing this from uh, as a close-up, it can work. And uh, yeah, so uh, the last thing or last method that I also uh, really love the thumbnail. Uh, glad that you like it. Hello, Gilbert. Uh, so another student of mine. Glad that you're here. Uh, so let's delete the, those two because we're not going to be uh, doing any more hair and fur today because as you've seen it has many flaws but it's actually very cool there's a few tricks uh, in it that i really think that uh, corona scatter could use because um, it actually is very powerful and um, actually i could show it to you but i don't have a proper model to do that um, at the moment on me so uh, let's do a bit of a scatter method okay so uh, this is going to be the last third method that i really like for any kind of office carpets or some carpets that i kind of went a little bit crazy on with uh, my wrinkliness and it's actually better because a uh, hand fur is uh, very slow to react so first what we're going to need is some kind of cylindrical object it doesn't have to be very uh, complicated and dense but i'm going to make sure that it's going to be good enough uh, for that reason, I'm going to go for a size 12. Radius is going to be rather small because I want this to be a spaghetti -o. And then we're going to go for some kind of nice height segments. So we need those to be at least a lot. Uh, so, okay, a lot it is. And now we're going to create copies of this object. Just from the top view, I'm going to go here. I slightly let them touch. Uh, so, okay. Um, now we're going to continue. And we've got pretty much that. Okay, um, now probably you may want to go further than that and actually add a chamfer at the top of the cylinder. So if you want to probably do it before you um, commit to what I did. So let's go ahead and, and instead let's go back, go back, go back. Uh, you know what? I just figured out one thing. I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm going to quickly do a bit of a a different uh, thing. So before I attach those, I'm going to actually add the chamfer as I should have, because I just figured that I'm going to uh, test one extra option for, uh, with you guys, uh, which might actually be a somewhat uh, cool to look at, but chamfer, let's go for chamfer, let's heighten the value. Okay, that's going to be enough just for the sake of not being flat. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be our hair strand number one. It's going to be our hair strand number two. Perfection. We want them to be slightly closer to one another. Just be friends, guys. Thank you. Now, still working on it. Perfection, 90 degrees it is. And we're going to now uh, go ahead and uh, create a Boolean. So Boolean uniform and we're going to unify all of those elements okay perfect that's exactly what i wanted now this is one more object which has no inner geometry so we're actually saving a, just a bit of ram and now with that out of the way we're going to add a, a twist modifier so twist it is and uh, now we're just going to twist it up you can see that this created this macaroni and that's what i wanted to have a macaroni so um, this is going to look very nice, but if you want this to be perfect, you probably want to move the modifiers uh, gizmo uh, into the right, uh, right position. But I actually added this um, in two ways to get more variety. So we're going to uh, get those two. And now with that other way, we're going to convert all of uh, them to a double poly. In this case, I'm going to add a bend modifier to the spaghetti -o, and we're going to angle bend it by 45, 60 degrees, doesn't matter. And because I don't want this to be a banana shape, I'm going to go for limit the effect. And in this case, I'm going to uh, go for gizmo, go higher, and 
just go for the limitation here so it just breaks at some point you you know it's it's a hair strand right it doesn't matter which way you're going to spin it it's going to look good regardless we're going to do exactly the same thing for the second one and probably we could go for a different size different moment you know it's just a simple um, hair strand so you don't want to you don't have to be too precise with that it's just a little bit of fun okay so we've got different objects i mean we don't need a fifth one and this is going to be our starting point so what we want to do is scatter those objects those hair strands individual detailed hair strands that are going to be good for close-ups on our object if you really want to go for super detail you're also going to be adding some kind of texture uh, just uh, like the one we've added at the very beginning the one that resembles rope or tries to be it uh, so pretty much this would work if we i would have some kind of mapping but i'm too lazy to go for it if you really want to go for some mapping on your objects it's going to make it look better but that's beside the point because right now what we're going to be doing is adding the uh, simple standard primitive um, chaos scatter chaos scatter object and this is the third method to create nice carpets we add in our um objects so distribute on our carpet instance objects are going to be our spaghettios and yeah those spaghettis are too big to really uh, call some well to call good looking so we're going to go for transformations and in here whether we uh, like it or not we're going to have to play with scale so first you could scale those objects down but that's going to require you to now go to utilities and reset x form so you can at least get those as close as you can to the original or desired size uh, before you get into it plus remember that what's going to be super important for those objects is that the pivot should be at the bottom of all of those elements otherwise it's just not going Going to work at all and now we're uh, since we've got those hair strands eh, they look terrible but we're going to make them look good so how do we make them look good first thing we're going to be doing is adding gajillion billions of them so let's go for transformations nope uh, it's going to be scattering and in scattering we're going to be ch checking out if all of the settings are correct okay it looks uh, really nice and now we're going to go to surface scattering and in surface scattering we've got maximum count of thousand did you did did you count that there's a thousand of those uh, small objects in here i haven't so we're going to add a one zero to it and then we're going to go even more it looks now quite fuzzy and good uh, i'm talking admission to much uh, march group and Viz academy uh, Hezbollah, nice to have you. Really glad that you decided to join us. And uh, uh, well, um, I am going to uh, remember your name and uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, so now let's uh, add some kind of nicer texture to our individual hair strands because at this point we kind of need them to have a nicer uh, looks. Uh, and this is where we can go for and for modifier for example uh, sorry hair and for uh, material so we can add those to our hair elements and all of that is going to now uh, work using melanin so we are actually going to be um, forced to top up a little bit of exposure to see all of the elements because at the moment it is going to be rendering for quite a little while but the effect is really satisfying because we've got really nice um, fuzzy carpet which is perfect for any kind of office for a low cut carpet but it's not exactly uh, going to be the only method or only thing we like about it because right now uh, we can still top up um, more um, hair strands and we haven't yet uh, even touched any kind of um, any kind of randomization so I'm going to go for actual same uh, same amount as we did with our uh, with our hair and fur and you're going to quickly notice that it just works it's instantly you know, working really good and uh, without any kind of slowdown for a computer unless you're rendering at the same time the rendering is slowing down my computer at the moment so now with uh, that out of the way let's add a bit of a detail in form of rotation so I want this to be a bit more 
laying down. So we're going to um, go for 30% of uh, rotation on one of the axes up until 80%. Uh, so uh, some of the hair strands are literally going to be falling on their back. So we can see that now the uh, carpet is more consistently carpet-like and it renders really super fast. So that's really great for most of the time. It's just going to be amazing because, well, this is what you need. Uh, then we've got the scale, which is the most powerful um, when it comes to using any kind of maps. So I'm going to go for 50% because scale randomization is going to be super, super powerful. But if I'm going to go ahead and add another map, which could be just a wrinkle map, if I want to, I can do that, which is going to slightly cut some of the hair and make some of them longer. So white areas are going to be longer and the uh, dark areas are going to be uh, shorter. So this is a very good indicator that we've got a lot of control, but uh, well, this is not exactly, this is probably not what you're looking for. So instead we're going to go for noise map. Uh, you can use the organic noise um, because it has a lot of uh, presets that are super cool, uh, but uh, we don't have time to go over all of those. So I'm just going to go for general, change the local uh, top and bottom values, change my size to something around 15 and the tiling on one of the axes is going to be very small. So something around 0, 03, 04, just so I'm going to create a little bit of that um, wavy pattern. So in here, we're going to now take that, add it to our scale and voila, we're going to have more wrinklier and more realistic looking carpet. Uh, so thanks to that, we're getting a lot of uh, detail for free with uh, just simple usage of simple map. We're getting a bit more detail. It has more wrinklies. It just looks better. Also, we can top up the contrast a little bit and add the fractal version of it. Okay. So it's now going to be a bit stronger and you can clearly see that the carpet is now really coming to life. It actually looks like a carpet because it's uh, full of those hair strands. And now the final touch we're going to be adding and that's the chaos map that I wanted to show you uh, that um, I never seen anybody using. So let's just uh, use it now so you know how to use it. Uh, so we're going to go to our uh, surface color. You can do whatever you want prior to the surface color map and we're going to be adding it either to hair color because we're using hair modify uh, the material or we can use regular physical material doesn't matter so we're going to go for hair color diffuse color come on so now it's going to be fully black right because no map is assigned but if i'm going to assign a map and uh, let's just find a nice good texture like this custom map we apply it in what's going to be visible real quick is that nothing really happens because we have a surface diffuse map but what we want to use is custom map that we just customly added also we can add a little bit of gamma randomization and hue randomization okay now the problem is that the melanin in our hair is still not allowing us to see the main texture it's somewhere out there but it's barely visible. So we're going to have to uh, lower some of the uh, values to really have it uh, visible. So first let's open up the hair and fur, lower the melanin. So uh, we're going to have lower levels of melanin. Uh, the carpet is melanin deficient. Uh, so you can now see that not only we're not just projecting the texture as we did with uh, our uh, decal, we're actually starting with each individual hair strand with the right color. So this is more powerful because if you're going to be doing semi close-ups, your hair color is not going to be cutting off into some kind of weird, in some kind of weird way. It's actual hair strands that are starting with the color of your background and they're growing 
to become uh, this monstrosity of a carpet. Uh, so yes, this is going to be very powerful and uh, quite uh, nice looking because this is the best way you can create your fuzzy carpets uh, as long as you're not going to go too crazy with... Uh, well, actually, you can go crazy because it's uh, actually going to work. Um, the only thing that is probably going to be the downside is that you're not going to have the ability to... Um, manipulate the hair uh, direction as you would with hair and fur which has a very high degree of that manipulation but it also has a bit of its own abilities because you can use xyz maps uh, which are blue yellow and red so normal map is going to allow you to set your hair and fur in a specific order so this is going to be the most powerful way of creating your uh, hair uh, object but instead of using the hair mo uh, material you can also switch to regular physical material but the problem is that the physical material is going to be uh, it's not going to have the same properties uh, because it's going to be slightly darker as it's not going to allow as much light to, uh, to shine inside of your object so it is uh, essentially going to be just more refined but less fuzzier as a hair um, object so you win some you lose some and this is going this were uh, three methods of creating carpets in 3ds max uh, using corona renderer and 3ds max so how do you like this guys um so far i know that uh, it's actually uh, something uh, i know that um following those uh, this lesson is going to be greatly beneficial to you because I had a lot of problems when creating carpets in my life and uh, I had to spend a lot of time figuring out the best methods and all of those methods that I told you today are essentially going to be the end all and rule them all so this is going to cover all of the methods there are also funny carpets that would require some kind of specific geometry or specific uh, type of uh, objects to be scattered some need sphere boxes you know you, those funny cuts but this is uh, more more or less going to be enough for you to get you started and create almost any carpet out there uh, so uh, glad that you like it uh, now uh, hi mike thanks for showing us your knowledge it's so helpful I'm glad to hear that i'm thinking uh, i'm thinking admission <laughs> nice nice uh can you won't regret it uh, so renault is our student uh, so he know what he's talking about hello from pakistan uh, um, uh, sure sir uh, thanks, uh, Mike. Well done. Very cool. Thank you for the good tips. You're welcome, Dennis. And I'm really glad that you joined me. Could you show us how uh, how to work with roads in different directions and how to map those without advanced UVW unwrap? Uh, Thambian. Yes, I think we're going to create a video on that, but it's going to be disappointingly easy. All depends on what kind of road you want, what the length of it is, but most of importantly you want to remember that the method that we shown today partially the decal can be also faked by a different uh, means because uh, you don't necessarily need to map asphalt on your road this could be any kind of random noise because all you need really is the right decals or right um shapes to create the all the stripes all the detail and you don't necessarily want to spend a, a whole year doing that so uh, with corona scatter you can also scatter out the detail on your road that's going to be pre prepared that's a cool idea for topic so i'm going to consider this uh in one or two weeks and this is going to be probably posted soon so thank you very much for that idea fabian i think everybody's going to enjoy it this will be this be uploaded on youtube thank you Zach Cha, uh, yes it is going to be uh on our youtube right after it's finished so guys uh Traditionally, this is it for today, and uh, now I'm going to just skedaddle, so remember to like and subscribe, leave a comment right after our uh, webinar is finished. I know that right now it's impossible, but you cannot imagine how much it means to me to see your comments, um, because, well, and we do it for some reason, so please make sure to... Uh, pay me in that way that you're going to comment it, even if you didn't like it, uh, just 
put <laughs> no actually um, just like and subscribe and ring the notification bell because it helps us beat the algorithm we're not blocked but we really want to make sure that uh, more people hear about us uh, once again thank you help us reach 100,000 subscribers which is right around the corner so again uh, visit Academy UK to sign up to our training visit Academy Co UK next week we're going to be modeling some lamps from IKEA haven't yet created the poster I'm going to do so soon once again thank you and see you next time bye bye guys Thank <music> you.